welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out. It's my pleasure to share with you my experiences that led to where I am today. So um, I'm first and foremost a hypnotist. And when I tell people that, hypnotist slash brain hacker, when I tell people I'm a hypnotist, the first thing they say is, does it really work? Well, actually, the first thing they say is, is it fake? The second thing they say is, does it really work? And without getting into all the explanation, oh, hold on one second, so I'm so sorry, I forgot to turn the record on the video camera. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. So rather than getting into what I say to them about does it work or does it not work, first and foremost, I feel like my job is to dehypnotize people. Because we are born into what I call the consensus reality, or what Jeff Berwick would call the culture. And what that means is, to some level, believe it or not, we've all bought into that. And what I mean by bought into it is our belief systems are formed around the consensus reality. So again, I believe my job is to dehypnotize that because what I've seen is basically we run our rules and our lives on what we believe to be true because we've been born into this reality. Now, each one of us is different to our level of belief at, at what we believe our consensus reality is. So for some of us, the consensus reality may be I watch CNN and Fox News because you know what? I need to find out what's happening in the world. And they believe that. Okay, for some of us, this consensus reality may be, you know, I went to my doctor and he says I have MS, so that means I will be, you know, die a, younger than, a lot younger than I had anticipated. That means that I will, you know, the myelin sheath on my nerves is going to wear away. I'm going to use, use, lose, lose, pardon me, the use of my arms and legs. And, uh, and you know, it's not going to be a happy life for me. Or, you know, your doctor may say you have an allergy to cantaloupe. So guess what? You know, every time I'm going to eat cantaloupe, that means I'm going to blow up like a fish for the rest of my life. I can disprove that. I have a video of me with a woman that describes her allergic experience to cantaloupe. Um, and how her throat swells up and, and your, her lips burn and her ings. And 20 minutes later, she's eating it in my office. So these are some of the brain hacks that I do. Uh, my favorite one is, guess what? Because I get this a lot, right? When people come in with their, into my office with their laundry list, you know, uh, I've been, been diagnosed with this and this and this and this and this. I'm ADD, ADHD. That's my favorite one, right? Because, you know what? ADD? What is that? Do you see animals in the wild with ADD diagnosed? Only dog has ADD. Only cat has ADHD. You know what? You know what I say? You just think different. <laughs> you know? Instead of you going from A to B like this, you go like this. But you know what? With a little focus and discipline, you get there, don't you? Right? So that's my version of ADD. So how did I get into this business of brain hacking in the first place? That's an interesting story. Um, let me begin with, with where I was. I was a hypnotist and um, I, to a certain degree, had bought into the consensus reality as well. Only in my own level. I mean, I didn't think I did because I thought I had an open mind because of at the age of 19 before anyone I know was studying things like the cancer industry or things like that and alternative medicine. I was, you know, I was studying those things, so I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really got into it because I'm a fan of fast. I mean, why sit in therapy for six years when, like Dr. Prash said, you can take psychedelics or you can go to hypnosis, and, and sometimes, I mean, we can get rid of, you know, phobias in one session, one to three sessions, or people quit smoking in two sessions, a habit that they've had their entire lives. So I'm a fan of fast, so I thought, yeah. And I also began to believe that we have an infinite of the power of our mind that we're not tapping into. And I kind of felt like I want to make it my job to help people to unravel that full potential. So I just want to take a quick survey in this room. Like who believes that they're absolute, I'm living to my fullest potential. Who, put your hand up if you believe, oh right, we got one person in the back, fantastic. Every, I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> He's working really hard to like, probably get rid of all that unconscious stuff. Now, now let me see a show of hands for how many of you believe that 
you know, you'd like to and you intend to, but there's something and you can't quite figure it out that's limiting you in some way or blocking you in some way. People, there you go. So just everybody take a quick look around because we all realize that at some level, at some level, we are held prisoner to our minds. But the great thing is that as much as your mind can be your slayer, your mind can also be your liberator. So let me tell you once again about how I first began, even after being a hypnotist for five years, I'd seen my miracles, like when, it, when we do the allergy hack, I'd seen my miracles about person comes in with an allergy, 20 minutes later could be eating something they're allergic to and not blowing up. Uh, there is a, a friend of mine, his name is Mike Mandel, he's probably one of the foremost hypnotists in Canada in terms of he's been around and he's so well known, he does training for the police and things like that. And because he was so busy with his hyp hypnosis academy, he told me, yeah, Dee Dee, once in a while, if I really feel compelled, I'll see a one-off client, but I drive to their house. And I thought, oh, okay, well, you've been really good to me. He was always very good to me, very generous. I said, well, why don't you just, if you have a one-off now and then, just use my office, you know? Just feel free. So, as he always did when he would use his off, my office, which was very rarely, he would send me a thank you email. And this one particular day, he sends me this email, and the email says, and it, actually, I don't even believe that one said thank you. It was just like two lines. It said, work today with a woman with asthma for 35 years on two inhalers. She doesn't need them anymore. And I thought to myself, what is this? What is he doing? Like, I need to find out what he's doing because, I mean, I thought I was doing pretty good. I mean, I had a woman come in for a tick for 20 years, one session done, the, you know, the allergy thing, all that. But this guy just got this woman off of two inhalers for 35 years with asthma. She doesn't need them anymore. And I thought, okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm going to take Mike to lunch and I'm going to pick his brain because i got to figure out what the heck he's doing. And uh, then I had a better idea. I had always wanted to start an inspirational podcast. At that time, it was podcasting, but now it's a video, video series on, you know, uh, ordinary people with extraordinary lives, how they do it. And I thought, I got a better idea. I'm going to invite him down to my office. I'm going to ask him a few questions, and I'm going to videotape the whole thing, right? And so I did just that, and if you see his... Our first video, I, I was so excited, I forgot to hook him up to the mic. <laughs> so, but you can still hear the sound, it's great. So I interviewed him on the miracles, because I thought, these are miracles. I mean, if they're miracles for me, and I'm a hypnotist, and I've seen some pretty amazing things, they are miracles, right? So he was someone who did a lot of work for the police as a friend, forensic um, hypnotist. So one of the first stories he tells is, uh, how the police hired him to come in to speak to a witness who was um, working at the drive through McDonald's and she was robbed at gunpoint. So it's six months later. And this is again how, you know, I didn't know that I wasn't as open-minded as I thought. So first thing he does is he puts her in a hypnotic trance and he, he asks her the question, the van pulls up and she says, oh, well, the, there's, there's two people, not one. And then he says, and she remembers, by the way, their entire order six months later. So I'd like to debunk one myth because people say, my memory, my memory, my memory. Maybe not in your waking conscious state. Can you recall everything you'd like to? But I'll tell you, if you are the right hypnotic subject with the right hypnotist, Every single event and experience in your entire life, including your womb, when you were in the womb, is recorded like a digital recorder. So the van drives away and he says, what does the license plate see? She says, I can't see it, it's too far. What does Mike say? Zoom in on it. She zooms in. I'm having a little trouble, it's too dark. Understand, the van has driven across a dark parking lot and is sitting in the corner. He says, shine a light on it. She shines a light on it, zooms it in, and she gets five out of the six uh, digits on the license plate. So how amazing is that? I mean, so 
my second interview was Steve Rame out of Nashville. I was going to Nashville and I thought, oh, this guy, he's really good. You know, I, I bet you he's got some miracles. Second story. He had a client that first came in for um, a phobia, fear of flying. So he, you know, he helped her with that. And then she called him up in a panic and she said, oh my God, oh my God, I've been just diagnosed with breast cancer. And, and you know, like I have a four year old and, and I'm freaking out. So he says, come on in, come on in. And he, I guess he must have had time that day because he worked with her on and off for three hours. And, he, and I said, well, what'd you do? And like most hypnotists, we got to fly by the seat of our pants, right? We're just like, oh, I'll just throw this out and I'll throw that at it. And he says, I don't really know, but at some point she felt warmth in the area. She went back to her doctor on Monday, the tumor was gone. But there was radial scarring left to show that the tumor had been there. The doctor was so freaked out, he drove the medical records up to the university himself. So I heard this interview after interview after interview, and I've interviewed about 70 of the world's top hypnotists on the miracles they've seen. And again, my mind was blown because what this made me realize is a confession, right? I wasn't that open as I thought I was. I thought I was open, you know, but it didn't occur to me to say, well, I can't see it, zoom in on it or shine a light on it because I'll tell you what, I didn't believe it was possible. So if I didn't believe it was possible, I wasn't going to make the suggestion to my client that it was. I hadn't yet become what I call a rogue hypnotist. And you might wonder what, what a rogue hypnotist is. There's somebody who will just throw anything at the problem, no matter how bizarre it seems. And that, those are the miracles that I heard over and over again. And I just looked at it and I'm like, wow, like I wouldn't have thought to do it because again, I lacked a lot of imagination and the belief system to believe that the mind is that powerful. So I spent like many, many years, because I had, you know, top access to all these people. So I'm like, I'm going to take his course. I'm going to take her course. I'm going to take, and I studied and I studied and I studied. And what came of all of this in the end is that I realized that change doesn't have to be long, doesn't have to be painful. We can do quick things where we can hack into the brain and make change really rapidly. And it's, and a lot of times lasting change. So, um, today I'd like to share with you uh, a hack that I created and in my products by the way Basically none of it's new because the scary thing is I took all I spent So much money like Like hundreds of thousands maybe who knows on taking all these courses because I thought they had the secret when I go back to my original training I had all those processes, but the thing that changed is this I had to change to believe it's possible so <laughs> there you have it. So sometimes it, the, the power lies within us. We have to do the change. Um, so I, this is one that I created that after taking all these courses and, and finding out the way other people hacked into the brains for really quick change, I just fr brought a friend into the office one day and we were playing around and, and I combined some of somebody else's processes with one of mine and it was like, wow, that's good because it's good because it's so versatile. It can work with anything anybody's experiencing at any time, anywhere, and I've never seen it not work except if, for example, someone's holding their breath or, their, or as it happened during a live demo, the, the woman was like, okay, yeah, it, it, it's working, but I don't want to go there now, right? Because it was in front of a whole classroom at a conference full of people. So I call this one layering the cake, and any of you with really good marketing skills you can come up with a better name, please let me know. I call it layering the cake because basically there's two parts to this process. The first part we're going to do is called a brain scramble. And I'm going to get into the how and why this works. And the second part you're just going to layer on in empowerment that actually comes from the individual themselves. So let me first explain how and why this works. We're going to have to. Paolo. Oh, wow. Okay, it is working. Let me. Oh, shoot. Okay, so again, some of the things that this can be used for is anxiety, trauma, motivation. We've all had that friend that we have to peel off the ceiling. They're nervous or they're anxious about something, or they've just broken up with their girlfriend or boyfriend. And, you know, we can say all those things like, it'll be okay, but basically, 
they're on the ceiling. We gotta peel them off. So the first thing that always has to occur is I call it defragging the brain. We do a brain scramble because we have to remove the emotional charge because there's always an emotional charge when we're anxious or it's basically fear-based. And as Dr. Prash was saying, if you were here, that activates our amygdala. Our amygdala is our fight or flight center. And once you're caught up in that, there's no rational speaking or, or no rational, uh, no, no rational thinking, pardon me. So the brain is kind of like this. Over here you have your prefrontal cortex. That's your rational part of your brain. It's your decision making. It's where your will comes from. And the amygdala is somewhere you know, deeper down in here. That's your threat detection center. When we get into our amygdala from fear or anxiety or stress, you don't have a choice. It's taken over control. So to give you an example of what I mean, it's like you might be walking in a nice grassy wooded forest area and all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh what, what was that? And it's, you thought it was a snake. Your amygdala had caused you to jump back and react before you even uh, noticed. And that's because our brain is, a, is an amazing catalog of all of our experiences. You know, when the first time a, a child touches a hot stove, you know, they learn, ooh, that burns me. And their brain goes, catalog that, catalog that. We gotta make sure that that's catalog. And it is a pattern recognition system. So see that thing that looks like a snake that turned out to be just a dark, curvy piece of wood. You're all, it's made the decision for you. So by the way, like once you're in that part of your brain, you're not gonna be rational. You're gonna be doing off the wall things could be like a, a person who grew up in a household with an abusive alcoholic parent that didn't know, you know, they had to like read their parent because they never knew when it was coming. So they're really attuned to a tone of voice. And, you know, they might be out in the working world or the corporate world and their boss has that slight tone of voice. So they're always having panic or anxiety around their boss because their amygdala is going, this is like dad, watch out, this is going to hurt you. And it's automatic and it's out of our control. So the first thing we always have to do is discharge the emotion, get rid of that. And we do this through what I call the brain scramble. Um, I guess I kind of start, started explaining the habit loop through what, what occurs. So the trigger will be like, like I said, the, the father with the, that was the alcoholic, the boss has the father's voice. And then, oh, what are, this is, let me just skip that. <laughs> that has to do with something else. Um, the brain scramble. So defragging, removing the emotional charge. I want you to think of emotional charge like a heavy wet blanket that's hanging over somebody. It's like, there's lots of, there's amazing empowerment and resources within us, but if you've got this heavy white, wet blanket over you, you don't have access to it. It's like all that stuff is coming and it's bumping up against that heavy, white, heavy wet blanket. So our job is to scramble the brain, remove the emotional charge, or it could even be limiting behaviors, by the way. A person is procrastinating. It's like they've got that heavy wet blanket that says, well, you don't know if you're gonna do it right or this or that. And all the empowerment, all the amazing, confident abilities and skills they have are just bumping up against that heavy white blank, black blanket and it, they can't get out. So this does two things when we do the brain scramble, which is, it's really simple actually. You have somebody focus on your fingers and because their brain is looping in one area, it's like, oh my God, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. When you take their eyes and you have them follow your fingers and you just scramble it like this, that's what dislodges the emotion, right? So why this works is it's called a pattern interrupt. It's like you've interrupted their brain. Their brain is going, oh my God, we're gonna respond like this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, on this track. And you've just gone, whoo, 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 oh, it's gone. So that, so their brain is allowed to take an alternative pathway. And the alternative pathway, once you remove the emotion, is always one of empowerment, right? Because it's like, oh, now all that good stuff with me can come up. So anything we can do to do a pattern interrupt, you wanna break a habit? A habit's on autopilot, like I said. You don't have control. Your unconscious mind is gonna make it happen. You see that chocolate cake? 
and you're in a stressed out mood, your brain and, and your brain believes that this is all the only thing that, that can relieve my stress. It's made the decision without you and it will carry out the action and then you'll say, man, why did I eat that chocolate cake? I swore I wouldn't eat it the next time, but your brain's running on automatic. You've got to disrupt that pattern. So this works great for cravings too. You got a craving, just scramble it out of there or get someone to scramble it for you. Do a pattern interrupt. Get it, get the brain to stop looping in that certain pattern. Can you do this for ourselves? Uh, yeah, you can. I'll give you, I'll give you a better way though, an easier way than doing this by yourself. There's EFT tapping. That's a pattern interrupt. There's something called bilateral brain stimulation where any right left rhythmic movement. So for example, if I have someone with high anxiety, they come in my office, I need to peel them off the ceiling. I give them a tennis ball. I put on a timer, sometimes for anxiety, one and a half minutes, not one minute, right? <laughs> and I say, just take this and I want you to, I'm gonna demonstrate. Throw it back and forth and watch yourself throw it back and forth. So they're throwing back the tennis ball, they're just, and breathe, right? And breathe. And after, I always ask them, okay, on a scale of one to 10, what's the anxiety at now? Or when, there's, when we're starting? And it's like, oh, it's like an eight or a nine. And after one and a half minutes, it's like a four. So when you do any kind of pattern interrupt, like bilateral brain stimulation, where it's any right left movement, that's why people feel better after going for a walk. Because what is a walk? You're breathing, you're stopping thinking, you're, your hands are moving right and left, your rhythmic right left movement. So, Oh, where was I going after that? <laughs> Sorry. ADT. I think different. Um, what? Pardon me? Yeah, after the brain scribble. Thank you. So when we take out something, we have to put something back in always, right? Always have to put something back in. So the second part is allowing that stuff to come up. But not only allowing to come, not only allowing it to come up, we want to install it in the parts of our brains that we access on a normal day-to-day -day way. So here's the parts of the brains, okay? So when you see someone and you're facing them and they're looking down over here, and again, most often, most of us are wired this way. Some of us are wired in the reverse. So let's say you're talking to a friend and you see them they're watching you and then all of a sudden they go down and they look over here. And again, this is when you're facing them, just to make it easy. They're saying something to themselves. They're accessing the part of the brain where they're saying something to themselves. When they look over to my left, their right, they're in their feelings. Here is auditory as well. And when they look up, which is 70% of the population, they're making a picture. So we want to make sure that when all that good empowerment comes up, we're going to get it installed in the proper parts of the brain. So there's two parts. First part is the brain scramble. Second part is once you, once you have somebody toss a tennis ball back and forth or you do the brain scramble, you're, you need to install the good stuff that comes up. And you're, it's going to come from them. The good stuff is gonna come from them. You don't have to say anything. You're just the guide, the facilitator. Everybody has everything within them. It's just sometimes we're limited and we're blocked in some ways. So I'd like to bring somebody up just to demonstrate this. And don't make it like, you know, like your life's trauma. Something like, Let's say, for example, you get anxious before you have to talk in front of people, or you're socially anxious, or you're a procrastinator, or, you know, something that just, you know, you get scared. So does anybody just want to volunteer? And by the way, oh, sure, come on up, Miss. <laughs> Sorry, she wouldn't she held her hand up first. Uh, by the way, this can be content-free. I don't even need to know what she's anxious about. So it's up to you if you'd like to share what you're anxious about. Come have us. They just asked me to stand to the right because of the audio, so I don't need to, you know, favor one side of the stage. Um, if you'd like to share, and your name is Patricia. Patricia. Okay, so you can, if you like, share what it's about, or you can keep it very general and content-free. 
Procrastination. Okay. So what we're going to get her to do, because we got to light up those neural pathways in the brain that like loop around when she gets stuck in, stuck in procrastination. So I want you to put yourself back at the last time when you were really stuck and you just couldn't move past it. Just be there now. Okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, how stuck are you? 10 being, it's paralyzing me, I can't move forward. She's at a 9, okay? And you don't have to do this, I like to do this. Where do you feel that in your body? What's the emotion, what's the feeling, and where do you feel it? Can you describe that? Like a pressure. Okay. Almost like somebody punched me on the throat, maybe. Okay. And it's a 9. Okay, so Patricia, just... Have a look at, open your eyes, feel that feeling, follow my fingers, follow my fingers, follow them, just like that, great, up, down, and breathe, she's not breathing, did everybody catch that? If they hold their breath, it doesn't work as well, keep breathing, good job, you're doing just fine, very good, very good, very good, there you keep up, keep right up, see sometimes they, they stop following your fingers, we've got to defrag it. Okay, take a deep breath, close your eyes. First thought that comes to mind? A relief. Okay. So what is that feeling at now? Three. Three. Okay, so it, it, it doesn't happen quickly sometimes, but she still got it there. Put yourself back in the situation of procrastination. Okay, now open your eyes, follow. Make sure they're following. Breathe, yeah, remember to breathe. Keep going, here we go, good job. Good job, keep going, right there. See, she's accessing something, so we've gotta scramble it. When their eyes stop, it's because they're accessing something. Okay, take a deep breath and close. Close your eyes. Notice what it feels like now. And what's that feeling at now? It's like shifted, like lifted up. Like nothing's there. Nothing's there. So that was only two, two rounds of it. Okay. Exactly. You guys can do this. It took me, you know, 10 years and multiple thousands of dollars. And I'm giving it to you. Just do it. Do it with your friends. Peel them off the ceiling. All right. We're not done yet, my dear. We're not done yet. Okay, so. I'm going to ask her a question, and you're going to show what the scrambling does. Where do you feel like that feeling's gone now? I don't know. Most people will say, and if you were watching her hand gestures, where, where do you feel like it is? Okay. It went up, right. So what any kind of bilateral brain does stimulation or scrambling or pattern interrupt does is it puts the feeling outside of them. They're no longer in it, right? So her gesturing was like this. So sometimes, because I'm just curious and I like to ask, right? I'll ask my clients, where's it gone? They're like, it's here. It's right here. That's what we want because you can't think when you're stuck in the muck, right? Made sense how you said about the wet, um, the blanket, blanket because when it shifted, it felt like something like a wet blanket shifted. Okay, part one how easy is that, everyone? Can everybody do that? Great, <laughs> right. it's so easy. Okay, now I'm going to get you to think of the problem, and we're going to continue with the brain movements. Five minutes, thank you. We're going to continue with the brain movements or the brain scramble part of me. Um, and what now that the black, the, now that the wet blanket is gone, what that allows for is all the confidence and the stuff to come in. So we're, I'll show you how we do this, and just watch what comes up for her. So think of the procrastination again, but open your eyes and follow. Now her eye movements are really smooth now because she's, we've defragged her brain. Okay, deep breath in. Close, close your eyes. Tell me the first thought that came to mind, first one. Light. Okay, and when you think of the problem, first thought. 
pressure. Pressure? Pressure? As in, no, now. I can do it. Okay. It came up. I can do it. Look down here. Now we're going to install it. I want you to look down here and in your mind, I want you to say, I can do it. And in your mind now. Now look over here and feel what it feels like to know I can do it. You got that feeling? Now look up here, make a picture of you doing it. Look up here. You got that picture? Tell me when you got it. Yeah? Now we're going to duplicate it. We've got to get it all across our visual field. Look up here. See the picture of you doing it. Duplicate it. Hundreds of pictures of you doing it. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Okay? You got it all the way over here? Now follow my fingers. Drop back down over here. Now what do you want to tell yourself about that? Let's do it. Okay, so inside your mind now, let's do it. In your mind, let's do it. Great, over here, feel what it feels like. Let's do it. Look at, she just took a deep breath. She put her shoulders up. Up here, let's do it. Make a picture of you. Your let's do it picture, you got it? Over here, ch -ch 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 -ch, duplicate it all across your visual field, all across, all across. Great, now what do you want to tell yourself? Always installing it, right? Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, imagine you're in that situation now, telling yourself, let's do it, I'm ready. Okay, feel what it feels like. I'm ready, right? Make a picture of you, you're ready. Right, you got it? To duplicate it. Over here, now what do you want to tell yourself? No. Now, now. So make it really emotional, like now. Now. Now, good, good, good. Now, feel what it feels like. You're doing it now, aren't you? Make a picture of you doing it now. Good, look at the smile on her face. <laughs> you're doing it now. <laughs> Over here, you're doing it now. Eventually, it's gonna fizzle out, but until it does, I keep going. So, look down here. Now, what do you wanna tell yourself? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, we're gonna do one more time. Make it, uh, feel what it feels like. I'm ready. Look up here, you're ready, now you're doing it, let's do it, got it? Okay, anything else you want to tell yourself? It's time to get going, whatever it is you're procrastinating on. Yeah, I feel like an energy, an energy rush, like coming to like, like a coffee. Wow, isn't that the best state to get in when you have something to do that you probably don't really like that much, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you for being our volunteer. <laughs> It's just that easy, everyone. So, it's just that easy. Go ahead. Uh, does it matter if they're right-handed or left-handed? Well, a lot of people will debate like where they're accessing their information, but 70% of the time they're wired the way I said. You can always ask them some simple questions, and the simple question would be like, you know, uh, remember, uh, um, yeah, that, that one, that was an NLP one. But I'm trying to think of how, what they t say to themselves. So just say, go in and tell, what do you tell yourself uh, in the morning when you wake up? And see where they look. So it could be reversed. Okay. could be reversed. If they just close their eyes? No, they, you'll watch their eye movements. Okay. Because our, our, we're always accessing, you know, parts of our brains that tell us where our information, our, our information is stored. So if anybody would like... Notes, I can send you this process. Just, this is a, a messenger bot, so just scan that code and send me a message that says, just hey, add me, you know, send me the notes and like my page, of course. <laughs> and for those of you who are interested in purchasing my brain hacks, I have a limited amount of memory sticks and I'll just go out in the hallway. And if you'd like to purchase that, I have those with me as well. Um, I have three brain hacks. I have health hacks, anxiety hacks, and weight loss hacks, which are basically can be used on any addiction. And they're all quick little processes like this. Each hack has at least three amazing processes. So for like health hacks, people with food intolerances or allergies, 20 minutes. You know, I do an amazing process where I, I talk to the person's I just relax a person that has some kind of disease or challenge, health challenge, and I just ask the part of them that created it, basically the symptom, what's going on, why did this occur, what do they need to do to change it, it will tell you everything you need.
will tell you everything. And then pain hacks. Okay, so I only recommend you do this, of course, if the person understands why they have the pain. You know, so for example, um, Judy, <laughs> she had a, a really, I mean, it was like 12 out of 10, you said, the other night in the room. She had been dragged by a horse 400 yards and basically had half her body crushed and all her bones broken. So she was having some really bad back pain. So we did my pain hack. And actually, I can't call it mine. They're not new. I've just, I've just put them in a video, t video tutorial for you with a manual, but... By the end, was it a four? It was a four. So imagine taking someone from a 10 in pain down to something manageable, sorry? 12. Yeah, it was a 12. Yeah, she was a 12. She, she couldn't sit, she was like wincing in pain. And I'm like, well, this is my job. This is what I do, so let's do it. And the next day you woke up even better, right? And then we, we worked with your feet too. We, did, we thought, well, she had pain in her feet. Let's do that too. <laughs> So it's, it's always fun. So thank you everyone for being here. And go in and do this on all your friends because you know what? And just telling them, oh, calm down, it'll all be fine. When they're, they're in their fight or flight center, none of that goes in. You have got to scramble it up and reinstall empowerment. Thank you. Woo! Oh, one more thing I'd like to mention, sorry, because this is a, a, a Narcopoco. Um, one of my, something that's very dear to my heart is I believe everybody should have access to food. Everybody on this planet should have access to food. And we now have technologies like vertical farming, which are unbelievable. We can literally produce in, you know, our, our facility will be a very small research facility, but we can literally produce, you know, 5,000 pounds. In, in one acre, I'll tell you what, in one acre, five million pounds per year. Yeah, which is in conventional farming, it's only something like uh, 415,000 pounds. No, sorry. Uh, oh my God, I am so sorry. My brain scrambled. It's low. It's like 90 times more with birth. Yeah, I know, right? It's not, because I read so many stats on this vertical farming, I'm starting to get them mixed up. But you know, vertical farming was once thought of something as the future, but let me tell you, the future is here and now. And there is no reason why we can't feed everyone on the planet. If we're pumping out in one acre, five million pounds of fresh produce a year, there's no excuse for nobody to eat. So this is my humanitarian project. If anybody would like to seek out, you know, if you're real innovators, and you want to be an innovator in the food food industry, please, please grab me, come to me, and we can talk about investment opportunities. And likewise, if you want to experience the pain hack or the brain scramble, just find me. Like, I love doing it. Like, it's like, like five minutes of my time. So if any of you want to experience that too, just come up to me and just ask me for it because I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Sorry. Poco is so hype, I'm trying to tell ya This the event of the year And best vacation ever Ryan's part of Jeffrey Tucker Just to name a few Get your tickets, you don't want to miss it You should roll through Talking politics to health and self-improvement To investing, so many things Not one thing, learn how to live life unchained Yeah, four days vibing on the beach Time to connect, all about growth Way more than a conference This is Anarchapoco Yeah, let's go you ain't seen nothing yet.